<laughs> All right. This is Famous Lost Words, and I'm Christopher Ward. And I'm Tom Jokic. Okay. So. Night. Australia. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Have, did you, have you seen many of the Australian bands from the 80s and 90s perform? Like, Are you I, talking about like Midnight Oil? Midnight Oil, uh, Men at Work, uh, no, the Mental only, as Anything, you know, bands like that? No, I don't think I saw any of those bands except for In Excess. Right. It was In Excess, and I think they opened for the Go-Go's. And I kind of wished Oops. it was the other way around. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But it was a great, it, honestly, it was a great show, and the Go-Go's were terrific, too. But um, uh, but this was in excess probably in about uh, 82, 83, around the time mm. of songs like uh, I Send a Message, maybe Original Sin, which, oh, is an amazing song. Right. Nile Rodgers production. Anyway, so I saw them around then. But you have a thought about the, uh, about the Australian bands. Go ahead. Well, I think somewhat like Canadian bands, they are forced to really put in their time uh, working in the club scene and on the road in order to develop a following, mm-hmm. sort of, you know, one fan at a time. Right, like see Blue Rodeo. For whereas, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whereas a lot of bands um, in the States get a leg up because there's so much funding available and management talent and labels are scouring clubs in L.A., so they're getting signed very, very young. Whereas bands like In Excess, I mean, they did their time. I, I saw uh, Midnight Oil once. Uh, they blew my mind. They were one of the best live acts I've ever seen. And I think there were a lot of Canadian bands that subscribed to that same mm-hmm. sort of work ethic to mm-hmm. get to where they deserve to be. Absolutely. Yeah, and it shows. And they name check um, kind of working in uh, Australia and what it's like. And uh, right at the end of this interview, they'll, they'll make a remark about uh, uh, fellow rock stars. And, uh, and they say, you know, they should try uh, touring in Australia and see how they can manage that. Right. So, like I said at the beginning of the show, this is from April of 1997. This is seven months before the death of Michael Hutchins, which was such a tragedy and such a loss. Um, they were promoting their album, Elegantly Wasted. And, um, but of course, uh, when this interviewer, who's Dale Smith, who's a terrific interviewer when he uh, started this interview he was asking them about their biggest album do you feel like now the now, as soon as I say oh, in excess everybody immediately thinks of of kick mm-hmm. do you feel like that album's just hanging over your head it's so successful it was so big mm-hmm. you almost feel like you're running away from it. it's a double-edged sword you got to obviously it enjoy the success is. yeah it, sure. but it seems to because everyone brings it up it yeah. doesn't doesn't seem to it doesn't come into the equation as far as we're concerned no, no? no. No, I, I mean, mean you know, on. and also you got to remember, everybody had a, a big time in the 80s. If they had any reasonable amount of success, it was a time when everybody sold. I mean, no one's ever had rec sales like, like it since, really. Yeah. And, you, know, you know, Michael Jackson, doesn't matter, you know, it's, it was an incredible time. And if you hit it, bang, mm. boy, did you. you yeah. Know? You know, Kick became one of those albums that was a soundtrack for those times. So, mm. yeah. Very much so. Now you guys have uh, y- your status has changed from the last couple of years. Now you're you're family men. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, actually, some of us have been for a long time. Tim's got a 15 year old son. Oh, uh, what does your dad do for a living? My dad's a rock star. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bum- <laughs> bummer. Yeah. I mean, he was out. With, he was out with him the other day in Sydney. And the Pumpkins are playing in Sydney. And, he was, he was standing there with, and James was sort of moshing across the horizon. <laughs> and, um, and then they played a couple of um, uh, medley of In Excess songs um, uh, at, the, at the concert, you know, uh, in, live, which was cool. And so suddenly James is like, oh, you're valid. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's what you do. Yeah. Right. Because it's oh, weird. You, you, you know? weren't kidding for those You weren't kidding all that. So that's where you've been. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's where the money's coming from. Yeah. yeah. How, did, how did your relationship start up? Because um, now you're you're the one that uh, you you probably have the most recent addition with the baby. Uh, no, Gar- Gary. Have you got a, one? I win. Yeah. Really? Yeah, he I've got got a, a, a baby two. sweepstakes. A four, yeah. four month old in tomorrow's time. Yeah, this I, time tomorrow. I got an eight month oh. old. Um, Gary's got a girl. We both got girls. Mm. I've uh, got two girls. So I got a five year old and a four month old. Yeah. No, it's 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 something that's been around the band for all for you know since we started. I mean. We just don't get a sort of um, a critical mass at the moment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> three babies a year. Yeah, yeah up, up to nine kids. Come in bunches. <laughs> yeah. Surrogates and yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we're all we're all potent men. I mean, we're, just can't <laughs> help it. we're 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 Australian. Your yeah. name, uh, Michael, comes up in uh, Rolling Stone magazine a little while ago. Mm-hmm. Did you hear what about was, that? What was it? Was the, it was the inc- the incident that happened with uh, who was it from Oasis? One of those. It's been a couple. Everyone in England, in London, has had one. <laughs> Last time I saw Tricky, you know Tricky, the the the, the singer, you know, yep. yeah, he, he just finished whacking the crap out of Liam in the toilets. <laughs> <laughs> 
Every, yeah. it's been, they've all been punched by yeah. the best of us. Yeah. Yeah. I've been standing in line for a while, but I just can't get near it. I know. Jeez, yeah. what's with those guys? And apparently, was it at the Brit Awards where they got up? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. they were just... Yeah, yeah uh, well, I don't know. It's weird. You know, I, uh, they're they're a little edgy, edgy due to due to a class, I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> so a little paranoid. <laughs> um, I just I just sat, sat did down. Did you get that? that one, yeah. Okay, I just I was being subtle. Um, <laughs> You know, I don't know. Too it's, much who tea. cares? You know, it's it's uh, the problem with Noel is, uh, <laughs> and I know him, and it's he, one minute he's really nice, next minute he's just scum, you know, to people. And uh, the problem, have you? Do you know? Did you ever have, have, have a um, uh, a show called The Thunderbirds? You know, Thunderbirds. <laughs> the Thunderbirds was yeah, puppets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Remember Parker? Yeah. <laughs> yes, my Noel lady. Gallagher. <laughs> yes, my lady. Yes, my lady. Should I bring the car around, my lady? Yeah. It's um. kind of sad because when we arrived in Vancouver to record, it's like, yeah, the, the, the you know the, the bellboys saying, yeah, uh, you know, Oasis were here last night for the first time. They played the arena, and it's like, great. How was it? Well, they walked off after three songs because someone <laughs> threw a sand shoe on stage. It's like, yep. <laughs> That's Tough. really looking after your fans. Yeah. Tough guys. Yeah, it's like, yeah, Jesus Christ. They know. should try you know, a couple of nights in the Australian pubs and see how they go. <laughs> Toughen them up. Yeah. That the shoe will be filled <laughs> and inserted. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't it's know. Like, I, it's, yeah. I wish them the best, but I think they better get over themselves a bit. Oh, okay, so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I love the, well, the brother fighting thing, of course, is yeah. a rock cliche. I mean, you can go right back to the Everly Brothers and yes. all these people that duped it out literally on stage and uh, I mean the kinks of course I, I think maybe there should be like a tag team wrestling thing for brothers in rock and roll bands yeah. maybe even a multi-generational one so the kinks brothers the Davies brothers yes. versus the Gallaghers what do you think have we got something I th there uh, yes and I think be I think because the Gallaghers are still pretty spry they could probably kick everybody. They would. But isn't it funny <laughs> that Christopher, twenty twenty one years later, the Gallagher brothers are still fighting, right? And they're still a thing. And uh, carrying and the just, flame. Yeah, and it's just so funny to hear you know Michael and uh, Gary from In Excess talking about this. And it's so great to hear Michael having such a great time and being in such great spirits as they're about to embark on a tour. And of course, that would be the that would be the end of In Excess once they uh, well the end of In Excess with Michael. Mm -hmm. um, of course, they did. The the rock star in excess and right, picking a right. picking a new lead singer, but you know it was it, it was just terrific hearing Michael being so happy, so engaged, and so into it, and he was you know having fun in the interview, um, and that makes the tragedy of his loss so much greater. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is famous lost words, and I'm Christopher Ward, and I'm Tom Jokic. Okay, so. Night Australia. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, did you have you seen many of the Australian bands from the eighties?